All right, all right. Left here. I want to go ahead and just share it. And then I'll actually get started. Hmm. Why are they not showing up? No, what's in the ministry? I might have to go to it from here. And I appreciate everyone who's going to come in. We'll be praying for you. I'm going to share it. And the word became flesh. That's the the name of this message for tonight. And the word became flesh. Man, you know, I forgot where this revelation came from. I can't remember if I was already reading the word. I heard I was watching Bill Winston earlier today, and I got some revelation from him also. But um, I was watching, and man, it really just hit me as far as when we. I mean, typically when we. Uh, hear about the word becoming flesh, we think of, of course, Jesus Christ. Because uh, in John 1, 14, which we're going to start, uh, we know that's what is being, that's who they're talking about, who John is talking about that. But there's also just revelation behind it also. Oh, one moment. Yeah. And we're going to start at, once again, John, the book of John, chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 14. And it says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So I hear that singing. That's my beautiful wife using her beautiful vocal cords. But the main part that I want to stick on is, as it turns, and the word was made flesh. And the revelation that first came to me, that we don't have to just look at it as Jesus becoming flesh to become, you know, our Lord and Savior. But what we also need to look at is the fact that every Thing about God's word comes into full manifestation. Full manifestation. And it hit me like, yeah. And if we are made in his image and in his likeness, if everything God spoke came into manifestation, then everything we speak will come into manifestation. Especially us as believers. I mean, that applies to anyone in the world, period, remember, because when he created man, he created all men. Man was designed to speak the word and do things. We, are, we were created to make things, you know, to, to bring things forth, either by word or by deed. And mainly, our deeds come from what we speak. For the most part, but we're gonna go to the beginning just to see, you know, 
what we're talking about here. Like I said, in the beginning, yeah. if you go to Genesis 1, and it's in the beginning that we see how God does everything. So in Genesis 1, we'll just get down to start, at, uh, look at verse 3. And God said, we were, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And not just though he said, let there be light. He also, it also says in verse 5, and God called the light day. So he didn't just speak something. He 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 was specific in what he wanted, and like he was specific in his design and, and in its purpose. Like we can create children, but we also must give them a name. And even in biblical times, people always named their children according to a certain purpose. Or some, or towards something that they wanted their children to uh, fulfill. So, and God called the light day. So He created light by speaking it. It came into manifestation. Then He named it. And then verse six. And God said, "Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters." And the firmament was. Verse 8, and he called the firmament. Once again, God says something, then he'll, then he gives it a purpose. He gives it a design, a, a destiny on what it is supposed to be. Her beautiful self. That there's the one again. I want to see it. Look. <laughs> They didn't even know how to. I was have somebody here interrupt the video. No, you, you ain't an interruption. You're a blessing. <laughs> but, uh, well, so everything is God said and then He called. God said and then He called. So, His word has always meant to bring forth life. Not just speak things into existence, but to bring life into it also. So, we're made in his image and in his likeness. So, what we need to be speaking about ourselves, about our families, about the body of Christ as a whole, should always bring life. It should always bring life. So, how do we know that that's what our words are supposed to do? How do we know this? Well, let's go to Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18, verse 20 and 21, which are very familiar passages within the body of Christ, but we're going to go ahead and read it. A man's belly. And of course we know man here is talking about mankind as a whole. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So now we see here it's just confirmation of what God had did with us in the beginning, it says that our belly shall be satisfied. And when they mean belly, they're talking about the inner court, like it's almost talking like your, the soul of you, the inner part of you shall be satisfied with the what? Fruit of his mouth. What we speak, death and life are in the power of our tongue. The tongue has ultimate power. The tongue... It's probably the most powerful thing in this world. When you think about it, when it comes to our mouths, what we speak, 
we portray people instantly based on what they say because we know mainly what they say is also or maybe also what they do if a person says they're going to do something we hold that person accountable to do what they said you know there was a saying uh sticks and stones may break my bones but words can never hurt me which is one of the biggest lies in the world and the word proves it because like i said we can speak death over situations we can eat you know with witchcraft they try to speak death over people through spells and everything else they can't just sit there and just do a little shift of their hands and whatnot and things will happen no things have to be spoken everything if we want to see things come into manifestation they have to be spoken so us as believers us as believers we have to come into this revelation that the words that we speak will become flesh so the choice is now what are you going to speak what are we going to speak and um i just feel as lately the lord has really been working on uh working on me on this type of thing. Uh, I did a series uh, called A A True Kingdom Mentality. And uh, it's just changing the way that we think as believers, you know, and individuals within the kingdom of God. And uh, this is still kind of sort of in the lines of that because it deals with us as the kingdom and how we portray the kingdom with our mouths and with our faith. You know, it's only our faith is built on words. The word says that our faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the word builds our faith. And as as the word builds our faith, then our faith continues to build our confidence and knowing that whatever we speak comes into full manifestation. So now we have to look at it from the standpoint of, okay, my faith has to be at work. Even in order to bring to bring forth God's word. And what I mean by that is our faith has to be in a work to speak the things of God, the promises of God, the covenant of God, to know that, hey, if I speak this word, if I decree a thing, then it is established. If I say this is going to happen, then it's going to happen. Uh, man, it, it hit me earlier today also where I was just thinking on it. And we're like, the, every time we read God's word, it's prophesying to us. It prophesies to us every time we're in it. Because every time we read it, we shouldn't just read it to read it. We should be reading it to, to get a word, to, to get a seed, to plant in us. And when we get that seed, you know, seeds turn into things. The word is not just supposed to say a word. A word is supposed to manifest into something. And that's why it says death and life is in the power of a tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You can't eat something that's not there. What are we hungry for? What are we hungry for? What are you hungry for? Are you hungry for the manifestations of God? Are you hungry to receive the promises of God? Are you hungry to see the miraculous continuously in your life and amongst the body of Christ as a whole? You should be. That's what we should be feeding on every single day, every single day. And if we're not eating life, what are we eating? 
There's nothing but death when it comes to the enemy. So what are we trying to speak? What are we trying to do? And man, like I said, this, this was just hitting me. It was just hitting me. The word becomes flesh. It always becomes flesh. It always turns into something. Every single time. You have not you will not see God's word fail anywhere. You won't see it. When you read through his word, when you read through everything Jesus did, when you read what the apostles did, man, it's like nothing fell. Whatever they spoke came into manifestation. And almost instantly. And somehow along the way, we as a church have gotten away from actually believing the words. We've gotten away from believing the word of God. How? I mean, we know we've had a lot, a lot you know, Jesus said there will be false prophets. There will be false teachers, you know. There's going to be people that go come around and want to, you know, misteach the word, you know, or take the word and twist it. You know, the enemy does that well. He's done it from the beginning. He's going to continue to do it up until his very end. He's going to continue to deceive people. But what we have to come into the realization of is that it is time. This is The time is now, not coming. The time is now where the church has to believe the word on a whole nother level. On a level where we speak it by faith and then we see it. And not doubting or questioning how God does it. You know, then people say, well, you never know what God's going to do. Well, yes, we do. It's, it's here in the Word. We know what he's going to do. It's just that we don't know how he's going to do it. We don't know which way the blessings are going to come. We don't know how he's going to bring things into manifestation. But we know it's going to come into manifestation. We know it's coming into manifestation. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And and we have to come to learn and know that no matter what, we keep our faith, no matter what the situation, no matter what. God has given us the power to speak a thing and speak it by faith even to the point where whatever the enemy tries, it is null and void immediately. Like even, even to where God will speak something and we can alter it. And when I mean alter it, alter it I mean not that his word won't come to pass because it always comes to pass but where it can alter for our benefit. Don't believe me? Go to Isaiah chapter uh, 38. Isaiah 38. Man, and this is where he, he brought me to, man. This was, this was just uh, awesome to see. This is just awesome to see. Isaiah 38. Talking about uh, Hezekiah. Talking about Hezekiah here. And in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. He was sick. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. So a word has already come. The Lord has said that Hezekiah, you are going to die. Get your house in order. Make sure everything is the way it needs to be because you're not going to be here much longer. 
verse 2. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, go and say to Hezekiah, thus says the Lord. Now he's not already told Hezekiah, the prophet has come, thus says the Lord, you're going to die. You're not going to live much longer. Hezekiah turns his face to a wall. Why he turned his face to a wall? Because he didn't want to see nothing. Nothing else matters. Nobody else who was coming in throughout the house, it, it didn't matter. I'm going to talk to, I'm going to turn my face to the wall, make it plain and make it simple. And I'm going to let my words be heard to the Lord. It says, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto the, thy days 15 years. So Hezekiah, knowing the type of man he was, won. Because any other time the Lord says this person is going to die, they will just weep, they will cry, and they will, uh, and they will just have to accept. But Hezekiah said, Lord, I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart, with a mature heart. I did everything right that I know of to do. And it has all been good in thy sight. Why? Because the Lord has told him that. And then Hezekiah wept. Speak before you weep. Speak before you weep. No matter, the doctor can say you have stage four cancer. You you only have a few weeks to live. You speak the word of God. And if you still feel like crying, go ahead and cry. But you speak the word of God by faith. Tears in your eyes does not mean you don't believe God. It doesn't mean that at all. We are, we're emotional people. Our emotions come from God. But you make sure that you speak unto whatever the enemy is trying to do against you. And this is the only example I have. We also know with Abraham, Abraham was able to alter God's word for a little while. He was going to uh, destroy Sodom and Gomorrah instantly. But through Abraham negotiating with God, saying, Lord, would you spare this many people? There was just this many people righteous. He went from like 100 all the way down to 5 or 10. I can't remember right now. But it got to the point where Lot's life was able to be spared, and he was able to get out, and yet still Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. When we have faith in who we are, who God has created us to be, then there is nothing that God won't do for us. Because in the end and all in all, it's for his glory. It's for his glory. What we speak brings forth something. It should always bring forth something. Whether it's believing for a, a, a miracle or simply just uh, uplifting each other, uplifting our spouses, uplifting our children. You know, the things that we speak always bring forth something. We have Matthew 21. 
starting at 21. Matthew 21, 21. And actually, no, we're going to start at verse 19. 21, verse 19. And what had happened is Jesus was come into Jerusalem. Jesus had come into Jerusalem and he saw a, a fig tree. He was hungry. So he sees the fig tree. Verse 19, and when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforthward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how soon is the fig tree withered away? Now we know in the... Uh, I want to say it's, uh, it's either Mark or Luke. I want to say it's Luke, uh, where actually, yeah, I believe it's Luke, where we see that they can't, they did it sometime within, you know, the day close to the evening. And when they woke up the next morning and came out and saw the same tree, it was withered up. And Jesus answered, and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. A faithful mouth brings forth fruit. A faithful mouth will always bring forth fruit every single time. Jesus spoke something to it and it happened instantly. So now it's not only are we speaking something, causing that word to become flesh, causing that word to come into existence, not only are we doing it just to see things manifest, manifest within our lives, but it's also to prove who God is. Now, many will say, well, God doesn't need us to prove who he is. He can prove himself who he is. Uh, let's go. Let's go, we're in Matthew. Let's go back a book, back into the Old Testament, and to Malachi chapter 3. And in verse 10, he says here, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now. Herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there should not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. He says, do this and prove me. Well, as Brother Anthony, that's just talk about, you know, tithes and offering and all that other stuff just to prove, you know, the hell. To, okay, well, might have two or three witnesses. Let's go to another word. Let's go to uh, John 6 and 6. And in John 6 and 6, uh, we see here, this is uh, Jesus getting ready to feed the 5,000. 
And in verse 5, we're going to start starting verse 5. He says, When Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, to prove himself, for he himself knew what he would do. We can praise the Lord for everything. But when will we start affirming him? God wants us as a church to be the very proof of our God's existence. By what we say, by what we do. If he says that we can have the desires of our heart, if he said that we can ask anything in Jesus' name and we shall have it, why aren't we doing it? He wants us to prove him. How does the world know who God is if those he has chosen are not proven who he is? unless he calls the rocks to cry out. And if the rocks are crying out, that means we're not doing our job. It is time to prove God for who he is. People do not <laughs> think about it. The world does not believe in God mainly because of the people who represent him. Ninety-five and ninety ninety-five to a hundred percent of the time, it is because of the church and how we operate and do things on if the world believes who we say we are and who God says He is. If we say God is a healer, if we say that God is a healer, then guess what? Prove it. It's more than just words. It's more than just words. Our faith has to be amplified to say, God, you said by your stripes I am healed. And then that testimony should be coming up to where people say, wait, I have to be sick. How did it happen? God happened. To where we're amazing the doctors and the nurses and saying, oh, we we if they can't explain it, we we should be able to. And saying, My God is a healer. Like but we're stuck in financial situations. We don't know where the next dollar is gonna come from. We don't know what where our money is gonna come in at. Then our testimony should be Jehovah Jireh is our provider. We should be able to prove it in our lives that he is who he says he is. Here's the revelation. Here's a quick revelation. You're, if God is our provider, if God is our source, our job should only be overflow. If God is our source, our jobs shall only be overflow. Meaning what? God provides for everything that we need. Yes, you work, but in the end, your job is not your source. Your job can never be your source. Your job will never provide enough money to do the things God has called you to do and ask you to do the things he has asked of you to do. This, no job will be enough. I don't care if you get paid $100 an hour. Because God is always going to place something bigger than what a job can provide. I'll tell you right now that, yeah, my job does not do enough. But my faith is not in my job. And he's teaching me this more and more. Uh, I, I, I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, when it comes to things that goes on, Sometimes like, man, I ain't getting enough hours. Man, I really don't get paid enough to do this or to do that. Well, I really want to do this, but 
I don't make enough money. I'm, I'm contradicting myself. If I desire to do something, especially something that God has called me to do as his son, then I, I shouldn't be looking at my paycheck to do it. God, if you want me to do this, if you want me to have this, if you want me to accomplish this thing, he provide it, and he will provide it. I'm believing I have a testimony for y'all soon. I'm believing God to do something that has been a desire in my heart to, to do. And man, oh man, oh man, oh man. I believe in God to have a test testimony for y'all soon, man. I, I, I truly am. I believe God is going to do start doing some truly miraculous things, not just for me and my family, but for the kingdom. I'm I, I'm trying to build this kingdom fence, y'all. That that kingdom that kingdom fence. I'm I, I'm looking to build it, and I'm looking to show people how to build it. But it starts with me and my faith in the Lord and making sure that his word is becoming flesh. So, man, 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 man. Take the time. Get in your word. Get that seed. Let it plant in you. Let that word prophesy to you. And put your faith out there now for it to come into manifestation. Once again, if you find something in this world where God said it's going to be like this and it didn't happen, let me know. Because I ain't never seen it. I ain't never heard of it. And, and Jesus said the things that he do, we will do also. Every time Jesus spoke something, every time Jesus did something, we saw the manifestation of it happen right then and there. There's no waiting months and months and months upon a time for something. We are, we, we are in a season where it should be seed, no time, and harvest. When we say something's coming to manifestation, it comes into manifestation. When we say something's going to be done, it's going to be done. It's time for the church to do it. It's time. For the church to bring forth the manifestation that God has been calling us to do. Man, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this out and pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, I thank you for the word that is coming forth upon this, Lord God. Let your word continue to do what it has always done, and that has become flesh. That is the, that it comes into full manifestation. It comes from the spiritual realm into the natural realm. What is done on earth is already done in heaven. So we thank you, Heavenly Father, that for the building of our faith, that whatever we speak, whatever we call forth and decree, that it is already established, Lord God. All we have to do and put forth our eyes and our feet, looking towards and walking towards the manifestation of what we've been believing for, Lord God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the manifestation of your blessings upon us, Lord God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the manifestation of your word upon our lives. Holy Spirit, continue to do the mighty work that you have been called to do. Continue to give us the insight. Continue to speak unto us to bring forth the word and the manifestation of God's promises unto us. Father, right now, I pray over every person that comes to see this video, that whatever they're believing for, Lord God, that they start speaking it. Continue to speak it until they see the manifestation. Lord, we call forth increase unto their lives. We call for health. I speak against cancer right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak against every sickness. And I speak against HIV in the name of Jesus. 
It is by Jesus' stripes that they are healed. Lord, I thank you. We bless you. And we are now coming to prove you, to affirm your word, to affirm that you are the one true God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Y'all, this is just an awesome thing, man. The word will become flesh in your life. The word will become flesh in your life. So, man, love you. Uh, subscribe to the Hope Center ministry page. This will uh, show up there uh, soon. I will be uploading it to the Hope Center ministry uh, discipleship hall page. Subscribe to the uh, Hope Center Ministry YouTube page where there's much more word there. Um, and this video will be uploaded there too. Uh, man, love you. Bless you until the next time. Man, y'all be blessed.